Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Well, hello everyone. This is Rob from RV Talk Radio. This is episode 64 and we have a great show today. We have an interview with Do It Justice Group, which is a young couple that are just started RVing. You'll love their story and you'll love their web. Uh, well, they don't have a website yet, but they have a great YouTube channel and a Facebook. So you got to check them out. And we're going to also tell you about some of the other things going on. So stay tuned. Well, guys, I have to say this has been kind of a eye opener and a little bit of an educational week for Sherry and I. And the reason being is I kind of saw a different kind of RVer than I'm not really used to, but I know that they exist. And basically they came from, I was telling you last week that the Heartland Rally or Heartland, they're the ones that make uh, uh, landmarks, uh, big country, uh, sundowner, um, uh, fifth wheels, and I'm sure they make some other products. I don't know them that well. But it was a rally, and it was about, I think, uh, 20 or 30 units here based on that. So every night they'd have a get-together and stuff all like that. And I was, it was kind of disappointing, with the exception of one couple. But uh, first of all, most of these people, I noticed they're retired already. But what I really noticed is there was so much into equipment and what I've got and what you don't got. <laughs> and... Uh, and that was kind of a, it kind of made me feel disappointed a little bit. Now, don't get me wrong. I think the rallies are good. And in fact, the couple I'm going to tell you about, a uh, charming couple, um, were part of that rally. And uh, they pretty much brought it all up, you know, from a kind of surprising to, oh my gosh, these are really nice people. Uh, at least the people we met. But it, we found ourselves... Uh, you know they're friendly and they say hello and all that stuff, but they, I, I, I really think as right in the middle of these people, I'm parked in the middle of them and I'm in a Montana. Who cares? <laughs> so I'm just like, wow, I love yours, I love yours, and I love that one, and I love that one, and I love mine. And so um, it didn't doesn't matter to me if you've got three air conditioners or two, and I don't really care what kind of lifters you have and I know yours is newer and the 2017 yeah I'm only a 2013 and you've heard me say before any RVer is a great RVer it's the experience the lifestyle the things you can do as uh, for being an RVer and and that's the message I know we always want to put out and I hope uh, you always get that impression from us but I was a little disappointed that if groups like that, like uh, I wouldn't mind eventually maybe going to a Montana rally. Are they going to be like that? Because, yes, I love my Montana, but I love landmarks and I love uh, some of the other models out there. There's just great stuff. And if you're able to get one, good for you. And if you can't afford one of the newer ones and you have to go with a 10 or 20 or 30 year old uh, unit, Good for you. It's new to you, and it's, uh, it meets your needs and your budget. Right on. That's how it should be. So anyway, that was kind of enlightening. But there's always someone that doesn't flow with the whole thing. And that was there was one couple that parked right next to us, and I knew that they were kind of the people that Sherry and I like. As soon as I walked around the corner and I was getting something out of the car or something, I hear this, hello, neighbor, how are you? And, I mean, it was a welcoming that most RVers normally do. And it turned to be, uh, uh, their names were uh, Ted and Nan, and they have a beautiful landmark. And so that's a, a fine machine, there's no doubt. And... <laughs> they were the greatest couple I've met in a long time. And so they really brought my expectations up as far as what that rally was all about. And 
if uh, if I was able to tell anybody in a Heartland group, if you needed a sponsor or somebody to stand in front of uh, to be a, a representative for you, you should call Ted Nan because <laughs> they are wonderful people, uh, very embracing. It was so neat to talk about our equipments and to say all the similarities and what we do and don't like about both of our rigs uh, in general uh, of the RV industry. It wasn't, you've got a Heartland, you've got a Keystone. They, it, it just never came up. It, it, they were just great, great people. And uh, I hope that if I was able to talk to anybody that's involved in rallies, you need to make sure that you don't alienate people around you. You want to embrace them, and, and if they want more people to come to your rallies, embracing those in the outside of the circle are the folks you need to uh, really uh, be an ambassador to, I guess. So, I don't. I just uh, I was so grateful I met those people because it made uh, made it seem so much better, and I, I have a better impression of the rally now. But um, Unfortunately, they're only 1% of the 100% of the group that was here. And so I wish everybody the best. And I'm sure that under other circumstances, those people might have been a little different. And they were just really being devoted to the rally. And I, and I guess that's good, too. But anyway, um, just an impression. So I just thought I'd bring it up. But, hey, I want to once again embrace Ted and Ann from the Heartland Rally, thank you for being our friends, and it looks like they're going to be long-term friends. So they were gracious enough to come over and give us their phone number and a little card, and we did the same for them and gave them an RV travel, RV talk, talk radio sticker and uh, gave them one of our cards, and we surely hope that we hear from them for a long, long time. And the next thing I want to bring up before we do the interview that I told you about earlier, I can't wait to have you listen to, is I want to talk about the younger generation RVers. And in our interview, I want you to listen to, real closely to one of the questions I asked this young couple and they're in their late 20s and, and early 30s. Um, and, and of course, I, I, I'm starting to get, it must be the old person in me a little bit, but I asked them if I could ask them about their income and how uh, what made them do this and it's interesting one of the questions I always ask is if you had a chance to uh, do it over again what would you have changed now with older folks like me and Sherry or even older than us in the 60s or 70s a lot of people majority say I wish I would have done this earlier but the answer I got from them being younger was not the they didn't say young, earlier which could apply but they talked about some of the structure that they dis, decided to use for earning income in the future was determined or or in place before they started and i thought that was a very very honest and very applicable answer for younger generation um, RVers. And so that's always been my concern is like, great, you go out there and you want to be an RVer and you want to kind of break the paradigm of you have to get your degree and go straight to work for a company. And uh, uh, you can have other dreams and some of them might start your own business, something like that. So one of the things they mentioned was they wish they had a little more time if they had the chance to do it over again is to build that structure first before they hit the road instead of trying to build the structure while they're being RVers. So I thought that was really good education and really honest answer. And I really love this couple. They're so down to earth and honest. And so uh, I was just tickled pink to interview them and, and listen to their answers very carefully. Well, we're getting close to the interview, and I, I want—I don't usually do this, but I want to summarize a little bit of what impressed me with this couple before we interview them. And um, um, anyway, so the big thing is they got an RV that was run down, you might say, and they spent most of their time refurbishing it. So what I really like the fact is they didn't expect everything to just be handed to them on a silver plate, so they. They knew what they were getting into, and they knew they had a lot of work to do. And uh, 
and they have a vision. And so I, I really admire that. And of course, being young at heart, I always put an emphasis on, and you've heard me talk about this before, is is when you're young, you can gamble, you can try things, you can break your paradigms and try things. And if you fail, it's okay because you're young and you can bounce back. And you kind of find us older folks a little more conservative that we're afraid we can't bounce back as early, especially if you had a business and it failed and you need to go back to the workforce. When you're too young, it's hard to get a job. And sometimes when you're too old, it's hard to get another job. And so the risk taking has to be really measured at those young age and old age thing. But when you're in this age of between 20 and 40, that's an opportunity waiting to happen, breaking your paradigms, trying new businesses. And if you fail, you pick yourself up and try again. And if you fail, you pick yourself up and try again. And then the third time you try, it's awesome. So I, I saw that nature in their uh, conversation and in their interview. So I really hope you enjoy this. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce to you the Do It Justice Group with Michael and Jenny. Hi, I'm Rob Scribner from RV Talk Radio, and today I have the privilege of talking to Michael and Jenny Justice, and their site is called Do It Justice, and they have a YouTube channel and a Facebook and I want to remind everybody that you can find their information in our description. And I'm going to turn this over to those two. And the first thing I got to ask you two is, how old are you? Hey, Rob, how are you? Hi. Hey. <laughs> really we nice are, to have uh, you. So I am 28 years old. Uh -huh. And I am 30. Great. Young folks. And how long? <laughs> and how long have you guys been doing this RVing full time? Was it been since March, late March of 2016? Oh wow! So only a few months, actually. So about four or five months. Yeah. Is that about right. Wow! What an adventure! Yeah, we're coming on to six months. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, we've owned the RV since October of 2014. Uh huh. And we renovated it for about nine months. Uh, I was in. Cool. So we did it just in our free time, and after the semesters were over and stuff like that. So, kind of intermittently, um, we worked on it, renovating it, making it our home, and we finally set sail last March. Sweet. Well, so, what kind of RV is this? We have a 1989 Yellowstone Camino you know, Classic, and you're probably thinking, "What kind of an RV is that?" <laughs> That's exactly. <laughs> We've never seen another one like it, um, <laughs> but it's a Class D, it's a 28-foot, um, it's on a Ford E350 chassis with a 460 gas engine. Oh, okay. Uh, it's a really awesome vintage RV. It's an oldie but a goodie. Yeah, and you guys said you had a second uh, vehicle, do, and you, do you tow it or drive it? Yeah, so recently we realized that we need another vehicle. Yeah. We had a moped, so for our first leg of the trip, we were up in the northeast, and we had a moped with a hitch on the back um, of the RV, and we just never, I think we used it maybe once or twice on that entire trip, but it was like maybe three or 4,000 miles, um, and we decided, we had a, had a car that my parents were looking after um, back in central Missouri, and we really just needed some sort of a more mobile way of getting around. So yeah. we decided to go ahead and sell the moped and drive the car. Uh, but unfortunately, the RV has a six foot extension on the back of it, which limits the tow capacity to, to about 2,000 pounds. Oh, gotcha. So we couldn't necessarily, we have a small Civic, but it's still over 2,000 pounds. And if, you, if we wanted to tow it, we would have to get a tow dolly with brakes and everything like that. So we just decided to go ahead and try to drive it behind the RV. Mm -hmm. It's actually been working out really well. We just have, what, two-way radios? Yeah, we have walkie-talkies. <laughs> um, it's actually a really uh, fun way to travel. And, yeah, we thought it would be kind of a pain, but it's actually not that bad. Yeah. And I was getting about 47 miles per gallon oh. driving behind the RV. Driving behind the RV. So <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, breaking the wind for me. And 
helped me get good, good job mileage. Yeah, and I, I don't want to forget, uh, I was talking to these folks earlier, uh, you guys do not have a website yet, but you're working on one, so I want to make sure the listeners know that there will be a, a website coming, correct? Yes, and it's going to be doitjustice.com, D-U-E-T-J-U-S-T-U-S dot com. Uh, we have that domain name, and it's just under construction right now. Yeah, and I, I do want to also remind the listeners that they're kind of uh, having a little fun with the name Duet, um, and it's actually spelled D-U-E-T, but uh, um, the saying goes, do it justice. So I want to make sure people who are trying to type that in, make sure you type it D-U-E-T. So so the next question Thank I've got to ask you guys is what what made you choose this kind of this kind of lifestyle? Yeah. <laughs> so we were, I was about ready to graduate from the University of Missouri. Uh, I got my photo, photojournalism degree, but we were kind of thinking about a year before I graduated, um, we were thinking about, you know, the future, kind of mapping out our five-year plan. And we just knew that the nine to five that Michael was already doing, he was working um, a job that was just not very creative for him. He mm-hmm. really liked his coworkers and everything like that, but it just wasn't fulfilling. Yeah, and um, we were sort of dreading me graduating, going in on the, that next step that society kind of deems as appropriate. Is you know you go get this job and you work your life away kind of thing uh-huh. and you have this nice big house and all that kind of stuff and that wasn't really what we envisioned for our future and we knew that the 9 to 5 was not for us and it wasn't feeding our soul I would like to say and we knew it was being so busy and we realized like with me in school and with him working full time when we got home we were absolutely exhausted <laughs> and just giving each other basically our leftovers Yeah, we didn't have a lot of time for to spend with our families, with each other, with our dogs, and that just was not fulfilling to us. Yeah. So um, we started thinking about different options, and in order to spend more time together and not so much time at the office, you have to lower your cost of living. So we started thinking about different options that would help us have a low cost of living. Mm-hmm. And, you know, a lot of the times you have to buy a big house because you have so much stuff that you have to store. <laughs> and so for us, minimalism went right along with that. Yeah. Uh, if we have a smaller house, we have a lower cost of living, and then we just kept getting smaller. We kept <laughs> thinking, well, what about a tiny house? And then that was still even like beyond our price point. And so then we started scouring Craigslist because we had this crazy idea, what if we just bought a really old RV yeah. that was Priced really low that we could just fix up. And we actually, before we kind of decided on the RV, we had talked about the tiny home, but I went on to YouTube during my breaks at work uh-huh. and I started watching channels like, um, I'm sure you've heard of them, like <laughs> Nomadic Fanatic yeah. and Chris Travel and channels like that. And it was really, the lifestyle was so intriguing. And, you know, every day I would go to work and watch these channels and say, man, that looks so fun. And so I came home one day. And told Jenny about it, and she was like, "I've lived in an RV for six months before." You know, she she went off with a sabbatical with her dad and her family uh-huh. um, out to California when she was younger, and she loved it. And so that kind of got us on the ball with the RV. And then we were looking at the prices, and we just couldn't believe how I, I guess how much depreciation there was on the actual RVs themselves. So it really kind of all fit into a, a nice puzzle there. Yeah. Yeah. So for for us, the RV life was basically a tool that would help us achieve the most important things in our lives that we wanted to, to have, such as spending more time, more quality time with each other, um, having that alternative to the traditional nine to five, spending you know more time with our families, uh, traveling, and um, also you know like whenever we would travel, let's say we took a plane because we didn't have very much time off work or school. Mm-hmm we wouldn't be able to take our dogs. And they are, at this moment, are the only kids we have. <laughs> there are, essentially, there are children, and we hate, we hated any time we couldn't take them somewhere. 
and a lot of the times with limited time and all that kind of stuff, bringing them on the on the plane and all that kind of stuff just really wasn't feasible. So we would have to leave them home and have have these adventures without them. So for us having the RV, we could bring them along with with us and be family that way. Yeah. Um, it was also an opportunity for us to develop our own business and become self self sufficient and stuff like that. So it was kind of the answer to all these problems that we were looking to solve. Yeah. So uh, let me follow up a little bit on that. Um, one is I want to ask more about your pets in, in a minute. But so um, I got to ask the question, and I'm sure listeners would ask too: Is how do you earn or plan to earn income to sustain your lifestyle? So I can go ahead and go into that one. Okay. Uh, basically, we when we purchased the RV before we purchased it, we made the decision to lower our cost of living to basically as low as we could get it, uh -huh. um, just so we could start saving up and piling up money and, you know, just to live off of, and so we did that, and we basically got the RV, and we said that, okay, we're going to go off on this trip, and, and we knew that our first destination along the trip was to do a wedding for one of our friends up at West Point, New York, and, you know, she was going to we worked out a deal with that where we would get, it was kind of a, kind of a pseudo job for a friend. And we, we did it and we loved it. And we started, yeah, did the videography, sorry, for the, for the wedding. Uh -huh. And we loved it. And so basically we just kind of looked at each other and said, you know, what if we, you know, we loved making YouTube videos. We were making them every week. We're still making them every week. And we love just being creative and editing and kind of telling a story for people. And so we thought, what else do we do? And we looked up, you know, videography for, um, like, uh, professional videography for companies to promote their businesses. Uh -huh. And we kind of just stumbled into that. So now what we do is we um, kind of based our travel around uh, going to seasonal places. And we're now down here in the Florida area looking at charter boats, um, basically asking them if they want us to do promotional videos for them. So that's, that's kind of what we do. Sweet. Cool. Um, so I got to follow up on the other part of that is, so I heard you have pets. So what kind of pets do you have? We have two wonderful mutts. <laughs> and they are named Chase and Roni. Yeah. yeah how big are they? Chase, uh, was, before we met, Chase was my dog. And Roni was Michael's dog, and we all sort of just, when we met, everyone got along, it was wonderful. <laughs> and so, um, now they, they're just wonderful travel companions, they love smelling and everything, and... Yeah, I have this thing, instead of, uh, you know, like the army saying, be all you can be, I always tell the dogs, they can pee all they can pee. <laughs> <laughs> and what size are your dogs? Are they like small, medium, large? They're both medium. Uh, uh -huh. Chase is about 40 pounds and Ronnie's about 50, so gotcha. I, would, I would call that a medium. Yeah. That's about a medium, yes. Yeah. Cinder, she's uh, 85 pounds, so yeah. That's a medium dog. Wow. <laughs> so, oh, trust me, wow. Cinder's small compared to some of these dogs I've seen, so yeah, that's that's a great size. Yeah. So, so now you've yeah. been traveling for a couple of months now. Uh, i got to ask you a couple of little uh, traveling questions. Like, first of all, I have um, how many states have you been in and what's been your favorite so far? Okay. Sure. I think the running tally is 16. We've been yeah. in 16 states. Wow. And, yeah, and so basically we've just, because we did a, a, the videography for a friend's wedding in New York, uh -huh. we started off that first leg of the trip going to the Northeast. Yeah, you know how many states there are up there, so it's pretty easy to get yeah. a lot of them. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and uh, and then we just sort of went down that the whole eastern side. So um, we plan on on doing uh, the lower forty eight. Yeah. So we're we're definitely not you know finished traveling by any means. <laughs> no, we no, want to no. see the west and everything like that. Yeah, I hear it's the RV mecca out west. But we've never been out there yet. But. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you have to call, give us a call when you get over to Arizona. So yep. Uh, oh, so, so, yeah. Is there any uh, places that have kind of stood out that was really just you just said this is a fantastic place? Yeah, so we have 
fallen in love with a lot of different aspects of certain states. Yeah. There's so much beauty and... So much uniqueness with each state. Each state has their own little quirk and, like, recognizable feature that you find when you travel to the state. Uh-huh. And it's... Um, but I think we, we've pretty much decided that there's, like, one state that we're really, really liked and we're definitely going to go back. Yeah, and that's Rhode Island. So, <laughs> Rhode Island was just... I don't know if it was just the people we happened to run into, but so many amazing people that would just go out of their way to help you and there was nothing in it for them and just amazingly friendly people yeah. and mm. also they seem really to be really into dogs just like us so yeah. they're dog lovers and just so many people would just come up to us and be like what about your dog just yeah. so excited about it and we love talking to people about traveling with animals and you know kindred spirits people that yeah. um, just they understand the joy that dogs bring into your life and that was really fun but also obviously you're on the coast and there's the beautiful ocean and this this rocky coast Mm -hmm. Um, but I remember kind of the day that it it hit us that Rhode Island is a place we want to visit over and over again in the future is we were at it was Point Judith Point Judith there was a lighthouse there and then there's this big rock formation that jets out into a water break actually yeah water break and Mm -hmm. the dogs and i and mike we were just running along that and we're out in the middle of the ocean and basically there were kids building sand castles and dogs running on the beach (laughs) it was kind of like our personal fairy tale (laughs) like all these wonderful things families having fun together and dogs are all there too they're involved so it was just we're like wow these are our people (laughs) so uh, we really love being there I got tons of questions for you, so I got to move on to some other stuff here. But uh, and I want to get into this subject because you um, you talked to Michael earlier, and he said you guys really try your best to keep your overhead down. So my next question would have been, what's been some of your favorite parks or RV parks, or um, what do you look for in in an RV park? And I also understand that you guys try your best to do as much boondocking or stealth camping as you can. So, kind of incorporate. Yeah, we definitely. Yeah, oh, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. We we definitely um, do a lot, a lot of boondocking, and what goes along with that? What we found actually up in the northeast, there's not a lot of public managed land because I know out west there's BLM land and there's a lot of national forests that are you know government managed land. And all of that's public land, mm-hmm. and so we when we first started doing the RV, we wanted to make the RV completely self sufficient so that we didn't have to plug in anywhere. We didn't have to run our generator. Um, and we basically kind of, uh, we, we look into the state, like where we're going to go. Mm-hmm. And we look to see where there's public managed land where we can either register for or just, you know, we call the, call the place, we call the park and say, can we, you know, stay and where can we stay? Where can RVs go? Because a lot of these places are kind of out in the middle of nowhere and some RVs just wouldn't be able to make it there. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, that's kind of how we based it. And we've actually had a really good time, uh, you know, as we travel going to Walmart and just staying there because you have everything that you need right there at the Walmart. And then we'll make it to a a national forest and stay there for five days. And what we seem to be able to last on our our water tank, on our RV, will last about five days with showers and everything like that. So. We kind of have a pretty good thing going here where, you know, we can stay at these boondocking areas without having to plug in anywhere. So that's kind of how we base our travel is is where where the good boondocking places are. Cool. Now, when you... Yeah, and we've... Go ahead. I was just going to add, we've never actually paid for paying to stay at a campground. Yeah. Um, That was kind of part of how this would be financially viable for us. Yeah. You bet. Um, because, you know, they can, they're, they're getting more and more expensive, it seems. Yeah. And so for us, instead of having to rely on campgrounds, we decided to invest in solar power. We built a composting toilet. And that way, you know, we can we can just be freestanding, self-sufficient on our own and not have to plug in anywhere. Yeah. Right. Um, so since you, uh, that, that covered that really well. Um so when you're traveling and going from place to place, um, 
I got to ask you, and people love to find out what people are using, what kind of uh, electronics or, or favorite tools do you guys have when you're RVing? As far as travel goes, we usually use, we, we actually first started out using Waze. We used Waze a lot uh, uh -huh. for, um, for our car back in Columbia, and it's perfect for small vehicles, but we quickly realized Waze was not the way to go. Uh, because it would take our RV off on these really odd roads that should yeah. not ever be <laughs> driven by an RV. Yeah. So what we did was um, we actually just started using Google Maps, and that seems to be pretty good. And we also just were kind of old school and used an atlas. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what we do. What do, you, do you have anything else? Yeah, and you're talking specifically about traveling or just about, like, daily life. Cause we use, you know... Um, for electronics, uh, Verizon Hotspot and antenna. You're just talking about travel. Sure. I mean, that's uh, yeah. Basically, um, all the tools that you guys regularly use that uh, other RVers might need to know about if they choose to do this too. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of some apps that we use too. Um, yeah. We, oh yeah, RV there's, Park. There's a. There's an app. Well, let me make sure I'm getting the name of it right. Called RV Park. Yeah. And it's a it's an application that actually shows you a lot of parks and state parks, and uh, it has information on like what they offer as far as water or duck station or you know stuff like that. Yeah, so, sure. Sure, and I yeah, use that one. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, and it also tells you if it's free or. Um, if it's not free, it gives you the cost. Mm -hmm. So it's been super helpful for us to just try to, when we're getting into an area, we say, okay, what's the, the nearest place or what, what's available? And that's been super helpful. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, also, uh, um, uh, do you guys have like any p favorite tools or equipment that you guys have highly recommended that people have? Yes. I definitely... Um, so with the RV, we ended up kind of going out on the limb and buying this relatively inexpensive uh, portable compressor called Vi Air. Oh yeah. And it, <laughs> I, think it I think it has a compression maximum of about 100 psi, mm -hmm. and it doesn't have any. Uh, it just has a gauge, and it doesn't have any um, way of. Uh, you kind of have to stop it on your own. You know, it goes up to a certain pressure, and then you just unplug it basically or turn it off. But it's been a lifesaver. It was only thirty some odd dollars on Amazon, and we we would recommend it to anybody just because you know being able to open up the RV or plug it into the cigarette lighter and charge up all your uh, you know fill up all your tires is just priceless to me. I agree, and I, I told you earlier it's like we have we actually have that same uh, uh, compressor too, and it's been a lifesaver. <laughs> I mean, a big lifesaver. Yeah. Yeah. So, so with all the, um, now that you guys kind of told us how you get around, how do you plan, do your planning? What, how, what causes you to go to one place to another? Or wh how do you uh, sit down and, and say, okay, we're going to go to the next des destination. What's your motivation or what's your causes or, or your planning that you use to do that? Yeah. Sure. So when we first, before we even left, Columbia, where we lived in Missouri, in Missouri, we um, sat down and tried to get a tentative plan figured out, and basically it was built around family and friends. Yeah. We have family and friends all over the country, mm -hmm. coast to coast, north, south, so we, we basically mapped it out that way, and oh, we wanted to follow the weather as well, oh, so yeah. we're going to be, you know, in the, in the north the northwest and the northeast in the summer times and the southeast and the southwest um and the yeah, fall. And yeah. And fall and when it starts to get really cold and so that's kind of those were the two criteria that we really used to build our our map kind of yeah so and we basically just kind of bounced around from you know the next family member to the next family member because we wanted to take advantage of the time that we had in the rv yeah. um you know and just be able to see the country while also being able to visit all these family members that we weren't able to do when we were, you know, working the nine to five and just not able to have enough vacation and all that stuff. So I'm sure you, you can probably relate to that. <laughs> oh too. yeah. So uh, uh, 
since now you know we get kind of past the equipment and how you do your planning and I love the answer about family and uh, weather uh, putting those two together those are those are important issues and uh, and, and not, yeah, o- not, you know, not only just that and it's also family support is always good um, so yeah that was a great answer uh, the next thing I got to ask you is what's been some of your biggest issues or challenges or problems trying out, you know, doing this lifestyle that you've just started? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we, we represent the alternate newbie at our being at, I mean, if you've seen our, our channel, you saw that we started from when we purchased the RV and all the renovations, you know, we had to deal with water damage and uh, mold and wow. ripping out carpet and all that kind of stuff. And we had never done any of that before. <laughs> so those were all challenges, you yeah. know? Yeah. And now it's just different kinds of challenges. Now that the renovations are over and we've been on the road, it's the challenges of, um, we have had quite a few breakdowns. Yeah. And yeah, so it's, it's that and, um, you know, starting our, our small business yeah. and launching the channel, this is all very, very new things for us. Yeah. And so those have all been interesting challenges, but we have made it out smiling yeah. and we're still loving this lifestyle. So um, challenges are really great teaching, teaching tools. And yeah. that's kind of how we've, we've approached all that and, and then she should be optimistic it's, it's amazing how optimistic we are about everything now just from going through all of these trials and tribulations you know you've really learned to, to appreciate all the all the good things that happen to you yeah so have you met any uh, interesting uh communities or people along the way yes yeah. we have. in rhode island when we first got there one of the reasons we really enjoyed it was we we needed to do some laundry, and so we stopped at a laundromat. Um, you know, I think it was in what Westerly. Yeah, I think it was Westerly, Rhode Island, which is I think in I think it's in the western part of Rhode Island, just in, on the uh, southwestern part of Rhode Island. But it basically, uh, this lady was so nice. She used to be like a travel guide, and she her name was Michelle. Yeah, Michelle, and she had nothing in it for her. <laughs> we started talking. Uh, again, like about dogs, because like I was saying earlier, <laughs> yeah. everyone in Rhode Island just, they seem like they're all dog people, which is awesome. We started talking about our dogs, and uh, she, you know, started talking to us about all these things that we should see in Rhode Island, and went out to her car and got this map for us and started marking it and telling us how to get to different places, and it was just, nice. it was so amazing having someone that doesn't know you at all. <laughs> yeah. And you know, two hours talking to you and connecting with you and just giving you helpful advice that yeah. nice. you're not, you know, you're not giving them any money or anything like that. They're just doing it out of the kindness and goodness of their heart. Yeah. And so that was awesome. And then... We also met a couple named Mike and Susie mm-hmm. and a, at a born scenic park in... In Bourne, Massachusetts. Born, Massachusetts, but right off uh, Cape Cod. And that was the only... RV park that we did stay at. Uh, we were doing a job there, a video, a video production job for that state park, for the RV park. And this couple made us feel so welcome. And you know, they they gave us their phone numbers and said, you know, anytime we're back in the state, like you know, stop by to their their house and say hey. And we were just blown away. It, it's happened more often than not, and we're just so blown away with all the kindness that happens, like as you travel and people are so interested and willing to help. That's what we've been really, I guess, yeah. about. Mm-hmm. That's great. And, you know, like, there's been a lot of things that have happened this summer in the world and in the United States that are just, they make you wonder if there's any goodness left in humanity. But I'm telling you, traveling, yeah. it restores your hope yeah. in people. You meet people and you're like, well, there's still good people in the world. And <laughs> it's, yeah. it's so encouraging um, to see just, yeah, some good, good things. Yeah. yeah. So now, now that you guys are RVers, do you guys uh, bring any hobbies or, or, or things that you do unique uh, that you can still do as an RVer? I, I mean, I think a hobby of mine, I really enjoy reading. Yeah. Um, reading, like, always starts my day out, right? And uh-huh. so one of the things 
you know, when you go into an RV, you kind of have to, well, at least when you're full-time, you have to downsize everything into the RV. So we had to let go of a lot of things <laughs> before we got into the RV. But one, one of the things we did keep was a pretty healthy library um, of books to read. And so, you know, we always, that's one of our daily routines is to wake up and read. We feel like it gets us in a good mindset. It kind of like gets our brain started. Mm-hmm. And I think that's that's the hobby that I can say that I've, I've brought with me from the, actually, you know, I would say I'd read more now than I did when I wasn't in the RV. It's just something I've always wanted to do, and now I do it, and it's just, it's really fulfilling to me. Good. Yeah, and and I would say, um, so I love photography. I went to school for photojournalism, and it's just, you get to see all these beautiful places. I always have my camera in my hand. <laughs> and what's, what's awesome, too, is that I get to share that with people. And, you know, we are active on Instagram, and I post some things on our Facebook, and I just love sharing all these beautiful things I see and interesting things with other people that are still, you know, back home in Columbia. And some people say, oh, I love, like, traveling vicariously through you (laughs) and the pictures and stuff like that. And it's just so much fun to share because you kind of feel like you're traveling with with more people, you you know, when... When uh, when you're looking at what you've seen and reacting to it, and it's just it's really fun. Yeah. So um, I, one thing I gotta ask because uh, of your traveling, do you guys have any unique memberships or clubs that you belong to to uh, help keep your costs down? Yeah, I think the the one thing that helped us out a lot is we have good Sam. Uh, I, I think it's we also have roadside assistance. I'm not sure if it's a separate deal. Um, I, we bought it a while back, so. I think it was it's good Sam, and then you've got your roadside assistance separate. But those two things have been awesome for us because you know there have been a few times on our trip we've we've gone about eight thousand miles. There's been a few times where you know some of the old parts in our RV have have started to fail, mm-hmm. and thankfully we've had that roadside assistance. You know it's super easy. We've gotten to a repair shop and gotten it fixed really easily. Um, and then another thing is uh, oh you can tell about Kroger. You're like a huge fan of Kroger. Oh, I love Kroger. <laughs> yeah, Kroger, we, uh, one thing that was hard about the Northeast, too, was they don't have Kroger's, and it was, all of a sudden, you're like, oh my gosh, everything I buy, I, I don't know how to buy that when I'm in an unfamiliar grocery store. Yeah. A, lot of time, a lot of times we buy um, Kroger brand things, and it's just funny when, you, when it's not there, but it also, <laughs> when you shop there, you get um, fuel, Point. Yeah, and, and that saves us too because um, we're filling up on gas quite often, mm-hmm. and so yeah, that's another thing that helps keep our cost down. Yeah, yeah. That's a, um, so I, I had an opportunity to talk to these folks a little bit earlier before we started the interview, but uh, I wanted to jump up to a question about health care, and uh, you guys told us a little bit about what you guys do for health care. Yeah. Uh, it's a little different, I'd say. I mean, go ahead. You talk about it. We use Liberty Health Share. Mm-hmm. It's not in a health insurance, and it's an alternative to the Affordable Care Act. Uh-huh. It is basically people that sign up, you do pay a premium, but it essentially goes into a pot. And when, you know, if you need uh, care at a hospital or uh, a clinic or something like that, you uh, that will be covered by everyone else that is sharing their pull they're putting their money together into the spot and yeah. whoever needs it the company disperses that money to you right okay. and the cool thing is, is the company does all the negotiating as far as prices go so they'll negotiate you know a lot of times in the healthcare industry you'll have really really expensive equipment and, and gauze pads that cost however many dollars and, and this company will will negotiate the price down to where it's a reasonable cost so that they can actually, you know, n- not spend a terrible amount of money on health care that's not really necessary. Right. Um, so that's, that's one thing we really liked about it. And it's, it fits our budget, too, so that's, that's a really great thing um, for us. And, yeah, and, and another thing I wanted to bring up in our conversation that I didn't uh, catch when you guys were saying you are doing a lot of boondocking type of stuff is... Uh, and, and actually, uh, another channel just did a little bit of information about this, but 
Um, I asked you guys about um, safety issues or security. Have you guys felt pretty comfortable? And, 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 and is, is there uh, signs that you guys kind of look for to give you an idea that maybe you should move on to a different location? Or uh, gen generally, how do you guys feel about safety and security? Yeah, I think the, the weird thing about these boondocking and the, the places that we do boondock, you know, we, we will go to National Forest, we've gone to Shawnee National Forest in southern Illinois, and it was just remote, so like you wouldn't believe, uh -huh. um, you know, and just so pitch black at night. It's really, the, the weirdest thing about it is not necessarily the, the fear of like other people, but it's kind of just like, almost like a twilight zone feeling in a way. Yeah. Uh -huh just because it's something you're not really used to. You yeah, your cell phone doesn't work. It's so dark. You can't see your hand in front of your face at night. And you're hearing all these weird animal noises that you don't hear in <laughs> other other places. Yeah. You know, um, place. so it's just kind of like, oh my gosh, and even if we were in trouble, like no one would even hear me if I was, you know, yeah. trying to find help or something. So it's, um, that has been, you know, you, your imagination can start yeah. working and working against you. Yeah, yeah. Um, but for the most part, if we're in areas that we don't feel that comfortable in, we felt that way more so in Walmart than we have yeah. food ducking. Just like, oh, you know, like someone maybe like eyeing up the, the, the RV or... I, I don't know. Just like kind yeah. of weird things like that. Yeah. You, when you get a when you get a gut feeling, we'll move on to another place. But it, it really hasn't happened that often. Yeah. But when it does, we just you know the nice thing about it is you have your home on wheels. You just turn the turn the engine on and you just roll down to the next place. So, um, you know that that's kind of been our experience. So it's been you know definitely we've had to change our thoughts on it and everything like that. But it we've really had a good time with it. <laughs> yeah, and I think too having two dogs that are uh -huh. very vocal <laughs> if yeah. anyone gets nearby uh, gives us a lot of security. Absolutely. It makes us feel like yeah. um, their, their ears are better than ours and there's some comfort in that. You know, any you little noise, they can alert us and and we can look out the window and see if there's anything that we should be worried about and usually it's a squirrel. So, <laughs> you know, kind of false alarms a lot but yeah. it does make us feel safe so we've never really very uncomfortable or like security was, was much of an issue. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that goes on. My next question is, is do you ever, or does it ever happen occasionally or even in your daydreams that you miss having an apartment or a house? I would say in it, like the, I guess the way we think about it in a very like 30,000 foot view of it, no way. <laughs> no way. We love, like, our, our life, this RV, everything like that. There are some minor things that I think, you know, anybody would have a little trouble kind of transitioning into, like, RV lifestyle. Yeah. Um, like, you know, the yeah, example, I'm sure, like, I'm sure to think. we have a composting toilet. I mean, yeah. there, there are times where you think, oh, man, you know, we could be doing more glamorous things than this. You know, you miss the big bathroom, you miss the, the tub, you miss some sometimes like that, but... Uh, yeah, and you know, like washing your clothes. I, I yes. love one of the simple pleasures in life that's my absolute favorite is clean sheets. Yeah. And I would probably wash my sheets more than I needed to back <laughs> home. Yeah. But I love, like, I, I just love crawling into bed and having these crisp, nice sheets. Yeah. And you don't get that as much when you're RVing. But I'm telling you, it is, it's a trade off. Yeah. But never have I thought, oh, you know what, I can't deal with this, I'm going back. Because yeah. there's so many more benefits than there are things that you give up when you choose to live this way. Yeah. And so... I second that. Totally. <laughs> yeah, she worded that pretty well. <laughs> so what's, what's, what's some of you guys' future plans now? So we are currently developing our small business, um... And also, we're about ready to go full steam ahead into YouTube. Um, we were kind of, we we're, were almost out of our renovation phase in our channel. Uh -huh. um, so we had tons and tons and tons of video that we took over the last, you know, year and a half or so. Yeah. And we finally kind of uh, weeded through all of that and, and developed some 
some informational videos for people to see how we actually renovated the video. You bet. But we're really excited to get into, um, like, we've been shooting uh, for our, our adventure series, and we can show people kind of like the adventures we've been on, and there are a few other series that we're going to be doing, too. What, what... Yeah, so we're just excited to start showing people the, the lifestyle aspect of yeah. it now. Yeah, sweet. Um, we started out, you know, the first video on our channel, that's us purchasing the RV, and then showing you all the renovations. And so we're excited to start interacting more and having, you know, question and answers and um, just starting different series that, depending on the response we get from people, yeah. Yeah, you know, we'll go for and, and start doing a series on that. But we would really like to start doing about four videos a week yeah. instead of just one a week. Yeah, yeah. That would be exciting. I'm, I'm looking forward to them. So, uh, <laughs> now, since you began with the renovation and, and up to this point, is there anything that, if you had a chance, uh, would you have done different? Mm. <laughs> I, I would say, um, as far as doing it differently, I probably can't say I would want to do anything differently because, you know, we wouldn't be at the place that we're at right now had we done something differently. So, like, I, I'm going to do a cop-out answer there for that. But, uh. <laughs> well, one thing... So that would have made it a lot easier is to have started this business yes. earlier. Yes. Just yeah. started, as my dad would say, putting hooks in the water to see what bites. Yes. Yeah. So just we we thought, okay, as we're traveling, we'll just kind of start this, and we didn't realize how challenging and how time consuming that actually is. Yeah. So we have so much more respect for people starting their own business, but yes. um, if we could have gotten that started before we left the security of what we were doing and um you know weekly paychecks and stuff like that that would have probably been a lot easier but as michael just said i can see where your point is on that one. yeah, yeah. Like, as you said, like it's so true yeah yeah well it, see usually with old older a- rvers they tend to say i should have started this lifestyle earlier so it's yeah. and but with the younger folks, it's it's actually a fascinating question, and 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 yours is more structure. You uh, there's a certain kind of things that you would have structured a little differently, but still do what yeah. you're doing. You know, so yeah, that's a that's a, it's a very good uh, answer to that. So I was uh, curious that's to see. That's a funny perspective. I, I've never thought about that. Yeah, yeah typically, I like uh, that. you ask almost any older couple that maybe are even closer to retiring or just retired. Almost every one of them will say, "I should have done it earlier." <laughs> why, why did I wait? Yeah. So, and you're definitely doing it earlier, so that's cool. So, uh, so, so my next, I'm kind of getting short on time here a little bit, but I want to make sure that this is your time right now. And if you had a message to tell other people that um, are thinking or becoming an RVer in the future, young, middle-aged, or old, uh, what kind of message or what kind of a uh, information would you like to pass on to them and and, and also what you're all about and, and 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 what you have to offer with your channel and all that stuff what's your message to everybody wow what a i could go on for an hour um, <laughs> try five, five minutes how's that <laughs> <laughs> all right deal so we really want to share experiences with others and one of the big reasons why we're on YouTube, you know, why we decided to film this is because we wanted to, even in such a small way, um, be an inspiration to people to pursue whatever dream they have, the wildest dream that they can imagine. Because, you know, a lot of people, we tell them, you know, we're living in an RV, doing stuff like that. One of the first things they'll say is, I could never do that. Yeah. And I think in so many ways, you're your own worst enemy when it comes to telling yourself what you can and cannot do. And so just keep asking yourself, like, why do I believe that I can't do this? And and slowly, like, you'll, you'll start realizing you can, you can chip away, like, okay, that wasn't a good excuse. Yeah. That was, like, you're making up all of these reasons why and it's not that it's going to be easy to just leave your normal life or anything like that but I think sometimes um, you can actually prevent yourself from 
achieving the dreams and being the happiest you can possibly be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, you I, w- know. I would say just, uh, just for me, it was just as simple as just cutting the cord and then seeing where you go. Um, you'd be surprised how resourceful you can be, how nice people are, how many people will help you. Um, you know, obviously you need to have a little bit of planning before, but there's never going to be a right time to do it. Uh, you're always going to have an excuse that could prevent you from doing it. You just got to, you know, just go out and do it. The only person that's preventing you from doing it is you. So um, our whole concept behind our behind our channel is life is for living, do it justice. That's why we came up with the name, yeah. and that's why we came up with that slogan is because, you know, we want, you, we want everybody to realize that you don't have to handle for what you're doing right now if you're not happy. If you're happy, absolutely continue doing what you're doing, but you always have an option. Uh, opportunity to do anything, whether it's in an RV or any other form of fun and adventure that you choose to do, you can just go out and do it. Agreed. Super. That's a great message. So, hey, I want to, uh, is never enough time to do these interviews, but I want to thank both of you so much for uh, doing an interview with us. Um, I, what I've seen so far, and I, I have to look at a lot of channels, but what I've seen so far is it seems like a very uh, uh, informational couple to follow in and, uh, and it's it's great to see you guys at the early stages because uh, that teaches a lot of people how to get started in this so we uh, definitely appreciate your channel a lot so um, I want to make sure that uh, people uh, realize that uh, if you're listening to this podcast that down below in the description is links to their channel and you um, we highly recommend that you subscribe to their YouTube and uh, go to their Facebook and like their pages so you can see what they're up to. They're very good speakers, very good writers, and I think you folks will really enjoy them. So I want to thank you, um, Michael and Jenny, for interviewing with us on RV Talk Radio, and I wish you guys safe and happy trails. Thank you so much, Rob. Thank you so much. It was so wonderful to be on your show today. And I just wanted to say one more thing Uh to all of our family and friends and subscribers thank you so much for your support we cannot do this without you and we just yeah we cannot say thank you enough yeah thanks (laughs) yeah and we're the same way so everybody thank you for listening and have a great day so what i tell you wasn't that a great couple to listen to i love their confidence i love their um, thinking things through and the fact that they're young and uh, we had some serious conversations before the interview and and realizing that they're taking a chance and trying things out but you gotta love it so uh, they got some great plans Uh, they seem like very smart people they're educated and it'll be really fun to see them grow and to see the opportunities that come in front of them so I hope you enjoyed the interview I think there's a lot to learn from this couple and I want to thank them very much for interviewing on RV Talk Radio so we're getting the end of the show I want to thank you for listening I'm Rob Scribner and please be safe and grab an RV and get out there Thank you for watching our videos. Please take the time to subscribe and consider being a Patreon supporter. There is many more adventures and some big surprises coming in the future with your help. Thanks again.